So inshallah we'll go start. Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Uh, we will be learning three ayats of Surah Al Furqan today. <coughs> Ayat number 60, 61, and 62. So we'll do a simple translation and some explanation, and then we'll go into the details. In Ayat number 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quoting a statement which kuffar and disbelievers are making. And the background is that, <clears throat> and it sounds like these are the people of uh, Makkah and Quraysh around Kaaba, that when Prophet Wasallam is conveying to them the message of the Quran, and in this message, it is said to these people, make sajida to Ar-Rahman. So their response, their reply is, what is this Ar-Rahman? Shall we make sajida to whomsoever you command us to do? And this actually increases more hatred in them about the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Now, one thing before I translate this thing is important to remember that the people who are responding, the kuffar, they are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> but at the same time, they have a number of idols <laughs> sitting inside the Kaaba. <clears throat> And along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they worship these idols. So when Prophet in the Quran advised and suggested that make sajda to Ar-Rahman. So the Quran uses the word Ar-Rahman. So these kuffar concluded that this message, this person who claims to be a messenger is suggesting that he has another god or idol and his name is Ar-Rahman, so we should worship now his god, his idol. But they are not admitting or realizing that Ar-Rahman is a ismul hasana and a sifat, the merciful of the same Allah they have been worshiping. But they are relating this word Ar-Rahman as some other, one of the other idols, which is not in Kaaba by that name, and Prophet is suggesting that I worship this, so you come and join me. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of this, their ignorance and their rudeness is responding in this ayat. So the ayat starts with Bismillah ar-Rahmanim, wa qila lahum, when and when it is said to them, and them are the kuffar and uh, uh, mushrikeen. Lahum to them, us judu, make sajida. This is a request, a command, a suggestion. Lir Rahmani to the merciful, to the most merciful, make sajida to him. Kalu, they say, they reply, Wamar Rahmano, what is a Rahman? And then they further say, Anasu judu, shall we make sajida or bow down? Lima ta'amuruna, to whomsoever you tell us, you command us, you order us. <clears throat> Allah says, Vazadahum nufura, and by this behavior and action of them, the hatred that they have in their heart against the message increases further. So that is the end of the ayat number 60. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next two ayats and very beautifully these ayats are set in this format that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them that the one who has created this whole universe, he is the Ar-Rahman. So what do you think that this Ar-Rahman is some other idol or some other false god that you are worshipping like? But he is the one who is the creator. So ayat says, Tabarak the blessed is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ja'ala, 
who has placed who has made fis sama in the sky buruj on the constellation the galaxies of the stars wa ja'ala fiha and he has placed in it and this is related to our earth sirajam wa qamaram munira a lamp which is the sun wa qamaran and the moon munira something which is shining by the light of the sun then in the next ayat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says wa huwa alladhi he is the one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'ala al-layla he has made the night wa nahara and the day khilfatan khilfatan means they are following each other they come after one another the day goes the night comes the night goes day comes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all this these signs are clear liman arada for a person for whom so ever who intends who desires ayyad zakara that who will remember ponder on the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarada or if he desires or intends shukura being thankful and offering the thankfulness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are basically some explanations and simple meanings so inshallah we'll go to the beginning to do a detailed breakdown but before we do that i want to explain some rules of the vocabulary and the grammar that will help us understand these verses the ayat starts with simple words but we'll go into the details of these the template or the explanation i want to give is that using these our standard three letters fa ain and lam fa ala and the meaning is to do we use these three letters as the template for learning so this is a verbal three letters capital letters when we combine three letters in the format that we put a fataha or zabar on each of them and pronounce fa ala this is the simplest form of the the grammar and the meaning of this is important is in third person he and past tense so past tense is did now this is a statement or this is a word which is in english is called active active means against the passive active is he did so we'll just write down active and in arabic this is called ma'ruf which means you just take in three letters and add the third person masculine he and put the past tense in there so in english it is he did in arabic it is faala now if i make one change in the harakat of these three letters and instead of this fataha the first letter i make a dhamma or a pesh and the second letter is a zair or kasra and keep the third one there if i make a change like that in english it becomes a passive okay so this become a passive and in arabic it is called majhul now the meaning is that he was done or he or it was done so passive is made by saying was done for example qatala he killed and if we say qutila he was killed so that's how we switch between the active and the passive so keep these two because many words are going to follow this particular style of template of formation so faala is active he did foila it was done or he was done it is a passive so keep those things in mind and let's learn the word 
which is coming the soon after and the root letters are kaf waw and lam the meaning of these three letters is to say <clears throat> now we will apply these templates here on these three letters <clears throat> but one thing is worth remembering is that all these rules apply when these three letters are solid letters but in this case one letter wow is a sound letter there are three sound letters alif wow and ya and their sound is the sound of zabar or fataha this is the sound of the mind o and this is the sound of e or zair these are called huruf e illat which are weak letters illat means weak and they are three letters which create the sound actually so whenever any of these three letters come in the main three root letters then we always have to make some adjustment in the sound so let's keep that in mind one of the letters here is a weak letter here wow so first thing i want to make the grammar of faala in english will be he third person and past tense said so we'll just apply these three letters kaf has a fataha waw has a fataha and lam has a fataha faala so sound should be qawala in the original qawala means he said but wow is a weak letter and it has a wrong letter uh, wrong fata on it one wrong thing because wow goes with dhamma so this is a mismatch so we fix mismatch by replacing this by a sound of alif and the word becomes qala qala means he said this comes in the quran a lot he said qala let's look at this one if i want to say it was said that is a passive so here we will take the same three letters kaf waw and lam and this time you put those harakat dhamma kasra and fataha so this is a strange sound qawila again and the meaning is that it was said okay passive now again we have to fix the sound because this is a mismatch so how do we fix the sound we again replace this wow this time by a ya because it was a kasra and in order to pronounce properly we change this to also kasra so it becomes qila so qila means it was said qala he said qila it was said because these two words are coming in the quran many many times qala qala allah taala we say all the time allah said qila it was said so in the ayat the third word here is wa idha qila okay so let's understand in the combination of the ayat but before we do that qila we just learned has the meaning of it was said or he was said it important thing is that this is past tense it was said now let's wow in the beginning means and and let's learn two more words here alif with a dal is is these two words come in the quran a lot alif dal but another alif after that iza these two words come in the quran id means when but this is used in the past tense whenever you are talking about something that happened in the past wa id qala musa and when musa said past tense when a time frame is being told but important thing is that if is going to be used 
But Ida also means when. But this is used for present and future. If something about present or future is being told, then Ida is used. And this comes again a lot in the Quran, Id and Iza. For example, we have the surah, Ida ja anasrullah. Okay. When the help of Allah comes. Okay. So this is used for the present tense. This is, is, is used for the past tense. So now in this ayat, wa ida is the word. Wa means and. Ayat starts with the word and. And next word is ida. Ida is a very powerful word. And it means when. First thing it does, it looks at the sentence. This word looks at the words coming after that and says, my authority is present tense. So I don't like past tense. So what it will do, instead of it was said, this is a will change to it is said. Even though this word is past tense, but the sentence will change because of the Ida. So now, when, if you look at the three words, first three words of the sentence, Wa ida qila, and when or whenever it is said, and when you say in English whenever, which means it's a continuous, it can happen anytime. So the meaning will be wa ida qila, and when or whenever it is said. So that is the meaning so far. Now after that are these two words which are written together. La and whom. So la will be translated as a two in this case. And whom is the pronoun they. Now who are they? The ayat is telling without naming them that they are the kuffar, the mushrikeen, the disbelievers. So whom are those people? So Allah says, wa idha qila lahum and when it is said or whenever it is said to them now allah is not telling who is saying but it is said to them it could be the messenger who is telling them or it could be a companion of the messenger who is reciting the verses to these people so the meaning is that wa iza qila lahum and whenever it is said to them now what is said to them the word is, uh, let's look at the word again, a template, three letters, fa and em lam, fa'ala. Fa'ala means to do. Now, if I want to make a command, an order, the English of that is do. If I tell one person do, okay, what will be the Arabic for that? <laughs> the rule is that you take the three letters, fa, and, and lam, and join them together. And you put an alif in the beginning, and a sukoon on this, and a sukoon on this. Okay. Three letters, rule is that you put an alif in the beginning, and on the second letter, fa, put a sukoon, last letter. The Harkat on first and this letter, Aleph and this, changes based on the three letters. So in this case, it is if uh, al. If al word means do. If I'm ordering you, I'm commanding you, one person to do something, I'll say if uh, al. Now we are going to use these three letters, seen, jim, and dal. The meaning of these three letters is to bow down, to make sajida, to prostrate, okay? Now, the rule is that we want to make a command here. I want to tell someone, make sajida, bow down, okay? This, this template will apply except if one change that the middle letter carries a pesh or dhamma in this case. So I'm going to use this template and this will be Aleph, Seen, Jim, and Dal. 
this is a sukun and this is a sukun but in this case it will be dhamma here or dhamma here usu jud if you are writing in indo pak script that's how you write usu jud if you are writing in the usmani script a little hamza is placed but the sound is same meaning is same so this is the order this is the command you are giving to one person you are telling that person bow down make sajda prostrate us jud one person if there are many people in front of you and you want to tell all of them all of you people make sajda then you add a wow which is called the wow of plural and write down an alif which is not pronounced and pronounced us jud us jud is a command <coughs> you are telling many many people or all the people make sajda bow down worship okay prostrate okay so now the word is us jud so word before that is lahum in the quran lahum means to them so when it is said allah is saying wa idha qila when it is said lahum to them means to the kuffar us judu make sajda all of you now when you read these two words together in the tajweed you do not pronounce this alif in between and it changes into a sound of no alif which is hamzatul wasl and to combine two sukoons together you have to change this to a pesh or dhamma so now you pronounce la ho musjudu la ho la ho musjudu the meaning is that wa idha qila lahu musjudu when it is said to them to the kuffar make sajda okay now the sentence is not complete just by saying must make sajda who to make sajda the next word is defining that the this is a common word ar rahman ar rahman is from rahama the one who is merciful so the word that we recite all the time is ar rahma and full word is ar rahmano ar rahmanur rahim we say all the time so the word is ar rahmano now you put a lam before that and lam is a harf jar and its meaning is two in this case two and you read them together you pronounce lir rahman but lam is a harf jar harf jar is preposition changes last letter sound to a kasra and the word becomes lir rahmani when it is said to them to the kuffar make sajda to ar rahman so that is far, so far the statement and basically the statement ended there allah says whenever a believer or prophet comes in contact with the kuffar he says to them or it is said to them you make sajda to ar rahman so that is allah subhanahu wa taala is quoting the statement of the prophet so allah says what happens after that the word is qalu <clears throat> we just learned the word qala means he said but if you add a wow it becomes plural so when you read, read them together you change this to sound of dhamma and extra alif it becomes qalu they said interesting thing is that it is a past tense they and past tense is said or they replied but again the important thing is that the word ida is a very powerful and it is applying here also so whenever it is said to them make sajda it will also change this to a present tense and this will be they say they reply whenever it is said to them make sajda <coughs> they reply instead of past tense 
they say what do they say they say two words wamar rahman okay so wow means and and ma i want to explain this word okay the word ma has multiple meanings okay ma means what usually if this words come before a noun that we mean what if this word comes before a verb then it is meant as not so both meanings are applying here but again so here the meaning is ma why because the word is a noun after that which is ar rahman <clears throat> okay ar rahman so the meaning so far is that wamar rahman <clears throat> answer is oh who is the rahman what is this rahman you are talking talking to us they don't recognize that what this rahman means even though it's arabic word they use in the language in the vocabulary but they relate that oh there are so many idols that we have each of those idols has a name so this person who calls himself prophet he is coming with another idol whose name is ar rahman it's a, that's what they are saying so they are saying what is this rahman you are talking to us okay wamar rahman what is this rahman then they make another critical statement here they criticize the prophet by saying anasjudu lima ta'muruna three words they have to understand all these three words together okay first of all the the words are repeating here except that we have to make a little bit grammar here and there so we just learn the word sajada seen jim and dal this makes to bow down to uh, you know make sajda to prostrate and i also mentioned that when we make the grammar the middle letter jim will have a pesh or dhamma keep that in mind now if you have these three letters fa ain and lam which means to do if you apply noon before that it becomes the grammar of we do so naf alu means we do so whenever you are do making a present tense and a plural of the first person we do in arabic you just add a noon in the beginning that brings the meaning of we do okay so we want to apply that on these three letters so you take this noon and take these three letters seen jim and dal and you pronounce the same way nasjudu nasjudu means we make sajda we make sajda or what we bow down now we are going to put a letter alif in the beginning with a hamza and a fatha a and this letter in the beginning of a verb brings a question mark so the word becomes anasjudu meaning is should we make sajda shall we make sajda are we going to make sajda is bringing a question mark so they are raising two objections the kuffar first thing they are saying what is this rahman wamar rahman second thing they are saying should we make sajda and then they are criticizing the prophet after that so first thing is that we are not going to make sajda they are putting in the format should we make sajda but they are saying we have no intention of making sajda but the word after that is lima li is made of two words lima lima means to li and ma means to what or whatever so are they shall we make sajda to whatever or whoever then the word after that is ta'muruna so these are common words 
Amara Hamza Meem and Ram Ra. Amara means to command, to order. Amr is a order. These are Urdu words also. So this means to order someone, to command someone, to give Amr to someone. So the word is again going back to the simple templates. If you have a fa and a lam, fa'ala to do, and this time if you put a ta in the beginning and pronounce tafu'alu, this brings this ta brings the meaning of you do. Noon brings the meaning of we do. Ta brings the meaning of you do. So word is taf alu. We are going to apply that on this template, on these three letters. So this becomes ta, ta mo ro. Taf alu, in this case, this carries a, this ta mo ro. Now uh, in, the, in the recitation, I want to point out something that most of us said wrong. This word is ta moro. Quran has this word. Ta moro. There's a difference. In we, we say simply ta moro. Ta moro is wrong to say. You have to combine this ta with the hamza and say ta. Don't pronounce alif. There is no alif there. The alif is just a chair for the hamza. So I'm assuming that there is no line there. So this is combining ta with the hamza. Ta, not ta. This is ta. So this is ta amuru, you command. The meaning is that you do, you command. The word after this is a na. Na means us. So ta'amoruna, when you read them together, ta'amoruna, you command us. Anas judo, should we make sajida? Lima, to whatever. Ta'amoruna, you are commanding us, O oh, the person, they are not calling him prophet. So ta is pointing, you is pointing to the prophet. So they are saying to Prophet Sallam that Whatever you order us, whatever you come here and tell us to do, should we do that? We are not going to do that. So simple matter of making sajida to Ar-Rahman, they are making such a big deal out of it. So now, after these few words of every party, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving his judgment by in three words again. Wazadahum nufura. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the words of the kuffar or not the words of the prophet so these are the words wa za da hum nufura so let's understand these are the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so wow means and allah is saying and this is za da hum the root letters are za, ya, and dal. These are Urdu words also. This means to increase, ziyada, zaid. So these are the root letters. Za, ya, and da means to increase something, to add something. When you put the three fatas, fa'ala, he did, zaida, za, ya, uh, Yahweh the Fata will sound like an alif. So this becomes Zada. Zada means it increased. Third person at the past tense. So that's the word in the Quran. Zada. It increased. Wazada and it increased. Increased whom? Whom means them. And them is pointing to the kuffar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in giving his judgment that there is something which is increasing in them, in the kuffar. What is this increasing? This word also we know, nafrat, is hatred. So noon, fa and ra, nafara, means to hate someone, to dislike someone, to reject someone, to 
to a version to someone. So these are the root letters and common word that we speak is Urdu is Nafrat. Means you reject something because you don't like it. The word in Arabic Nufura means the same thing, hatred. Okay, the word is Nufurun, always with the two Dhamma. Nufurun means hatred. Okay, but it is coming as a maful of Zada. So wherever some word comes as a maful, we change two Dhammas to two Fatas and add a lift. Word becomes Nufurun, changes to Nufuran. And when you stop, you pronounce Nufura. Allah says, Wazadahum Nufura, their increase, their hatred towards the message of Allah has increased because of their behavior that they are criticizing the Prophet and saying, Who is a Rahman that we should make such a that to? So that is one of the things that happened at the time of the revelation of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next two ayats is re relating or describing that what do you think this Rahman is? What, what is your idea about this Rahman? So Allah says, Tabaraka Lazi. So Tabaraka is root letters are Baraka. Baraka means to have some Barakat. Okay? But these are three letters, so they belong to the group of the words fa'ala. We are going to make bigger word by adding a ta and and fa, tafa, ala, ta and alif. So tafa ala becomes tabaraka. Tabaraka means to have blessing. You add a ta in the beginning and an alif, so you add a ta here and alif here. It becomes Tabaraka. Tabaraka means Tahir and Alif here. Tabaraka means to have blessing of something. Tabaraka, when you put some all Fatahas, it becomes he is blessed. Someone he, because Fala he did, when you put all Fatahas, it becomes third person past tense. Tabaraka, he is blessed. He is pointing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining himself by saying, Blessed is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allazi means he is. Okay. Who is he? Ja'ala. So root letters are jim and lam. Ja'ala. Ja'ala means to place or to make. Okay. These are very simple words. So when you put the three fatas, it becomes the grammar of third person past tense. Ja Allah, he made or he placed. What did he make or what did he place? First thing Allah is to make, where did he put or place? So the word is samaun. Samaun means a sky. And from the context, this is the sky of the our world. Samaud dunya, which is the blue sky. When you put Al, it becomes the sky, and Al will remove one. The must become As Sama. Oh, when you pronounce, you pronounce seen with the Shadda. As Sama. Oh, means the sky. Then you put Fi in the beginning. Fi means in. Fi is a harf It will change Sama. Oh, to Sama. -i. And because of this Hamza, you pronounce this Alif as a long in Tajweed. So com combination is Fissamai in the sky. Tabarakallazi, blessed is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ja'ala, he has placed, he has made Fissamai in the sky. What he has placed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word, and this is also a common word, Ba, Ra, and Jim. Burjun, we say Burj, Burjun is a constellation of galaxies and stars. Many, many stars form a group in the skies with the galaxies and stars and all kinds of things. And they are called constellations. The Arabic word is Burjun, one constellation. 
Its plural is Burujun. Burujun means many, many constellations in the sky, in our universe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Blessed is He, Allah, who has placed in the, in the sky, in the sky of this world, Buru Jun is the full word, but it is coming as a maful of Ja'ala, and our object, and when a word comes object, work is done, we change to the mask to two fatas and add alif. So its pronunciation is Buru Jan. That's the word. Ja'ala, he has placed, Prissamae in the sky, Burujan, the constellations. Wow means and. And he also placed, so Burujan will be pronounced as Burujan. Vajala, same word. And he has placed. Fi in, and ha means it. And this ha is pointing to sky again. And he has placed. Fiha therein or in it, in the sky. What is Allah saying this time? Two words. Sirajun is a common word. And the meaning of the Sirajun is a lamp. Now the characteristic of this word is that it has its own light. It contains the light. It emits the light. So Sirajun is sun. Sun does not lead, need any light from outside. It generates the, uh, the light and it sends out the light. So the word Sirajun means sun. Okay. The other word is Kamarun. We say Kamarun, but the word is Kamarun. Kamarun means moon. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that he has placed Fiha in it, in this sky, because again the jala is coming, so this word is a maful or object that will change this to two fatas and end alif and pronounce sirajan. Same thing will happen kamarun, it will change to kamaran. Okay. Now a sifat of kamar is being mentioned here. The root letters are noon, vow, and ra. This means to light, noor. Okay. Munir is something which shines. The word Munir is from there. It means to shine. Kamar has the characteristic of being Munir. It shines. It doesn't have its own light. Siraj has its own light. It sends out, which is the lamp, which is the sun. Kamar shines without its own light, which means it reflects the sunlight and it shines. So that is the meaning of Kamaram Munirun and it changes to Muniran because it's the Sifat. So that's one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayat number 61. In the next ayat again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning His authority, power, Qudrat. First few words are same. Bahuwa Ladi, He is the one. Ja'ala, He has made. This time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is pointing to two different things. The word is Lailun. Lailun means night. And you put Al before that. So it becomes Al Lailu. Al changes to one Dhamma. So it becomes Al Lailu. And the word becomes Da. Okay. So Jala. Al-Lailu. Now again, this word is coming as a maful or object of Ja'ala. So whenever that happens, Dhamma changes to Fata. So it becomes Al-Layla. Ja'ala Layla, he has placed the night. He has made the night. One thing. The second word is Naharun. Again, the same rule. You start with the word Naharun means day. Nahar means day. Then you put Al before that, becomes the day, and Al will remove one Dhamma, and you pronounce this, noon kills the sound of Lam, takes over, it's a Shamsi letter, so it becomes Annaharu. Annaharu is the full word, but it is coming as a maful of Jala, 
सो इट बिकम्स अन्नाहारा Jala Laila wa means end an nahara so pronounce one nahara he is the one allah subhanahu wa taala who has placed the night and the day now or he has made the nine of the day now one word allah subhanahu wa taala is using is uh, root letters are kha lam and fa khalafa khalafa means to follow to go after the word khalifa is the one who follows one ruler from the one to the next ruler khalifa means to follow the word khilfatun is made from the same root letters and the meaning of khilfatun is to follow one after another one goes the other comes that goes in the same thing comes back so khal fatun is the full word follow each other day goes night comes night goes day comes they follow each other in a circle that is the word khalfatun again this is coming as a sifat so this will change to to fatas so word is khil not khalfatun khilfatun okay so khilfatun changes to khilfatan means following one another day and night day and night so that is the system allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about then allah subhanahu wa taala says liman arada these are common urdu words root letters are ra waw and dal faala if i put an alif in the begum be beginning it becomes four letter word afala and this becomes four letter arif ra waw and dal Af ala, this wow will have the sound of alif because there's a fata on that, so it becomes arada. Arada is the word we know. Irada means to make intention. This is the the root word. Arada means to make intention, to desire, to wish. That's the meaning of word arada. So when you put the fatas, arada. becomes the gram of third person past tense faala he did arada he made intention or he intended liman li and man okay so li means two in this case man means whoever for whoever liman arada whoever wants to desires intends okay allah says whoever wants or intents or wishes there is a lesson for that person in this qudrat of allah subhanahu wa taala what is being said after that ay yadhakkara aw arada shukura all words are known liman arada whoever intends ay yadhakkara that he should remember do the zikr do the tazkir of allah subhanahu wa taala aw means or arada again same word he intends shukura which is shukuran means being thankful thankfulness this is the general meaning but i want to explain this word yadhakara the root letters are zakara zal kaf and ra common word zakara means to remember we to the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala that is zakara three letters they belong to the group of the word faala okay three letters the karam is to remember now we are going to make a bigger word by adding a ta in the beginning and a shadda on the middle letter so if i put a shadda on the middle letter and a ta in the beginning this becomes a five letter word and pronounces tafaala so this and we'll see how the meaning changes so we are going to apply this rule on these three letters so you put a ta in the beginning and dal is there this next letter that has a shadda is kaf so you put there and you put a ra so the word becomes tazakkara this is also a common urdu word tazakkara means to remember mention talk about something tazkira tazkir so that is the word tazakkara this is the word we are going to use in this ayat so keep in mind 
تذکیر از ریمائنڈنگ ریمبرنس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ذکرہ از مینس یو یور سیلف از ڈوئنگ دس ذکر آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی تذکرہ مینس یو آر ریمائنڈنگ سم ون ایلس دیٹ ڈو دس ذکر آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی سو اٹ بیکمز تذکیر نصیحت اوکے دیٹس دی میننگ آف تذکرہ اوکے سو دس از دی ورڈ قرآن از یوزنگ ناؤ simple template is that fa'ala means to do okay if i put a ya in the beginning and these three things are coming yaf'alu means he does this is he and present tense does and as we have seen that if you put a noon there it becomes we If you put a ta in the beginning, it becomes you. So this is a template that just by changing the first letter, it keeps going. So this is yaf alu, which means putting a ya in the beginning brings the meaning of third person he and past tense. So we are going to do apply that here, ya in the beginning. <coughs> so if I sound this thing, First, the meaning will be third person and does. So third person, ya, reminds or remembers or do, he does the tazkir or tazkira of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word is ya ta zakkara. Okay. Ya ta zakkaru. Okay. Last letter has a dhamma. So the word, first grammar is yata zakkaru the meaning is that he does the remembrance he does the reminding allah says liman arada whoever wants he can remind and remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeing his qudrat so the word is yata zakkara now a couple changes happen in this kind of words in the recitation in the tajweed When a qari is reciting the maharaj of every letter, the maharaj of ta and dhal are very close to each other. When you pronounce ta, the tongue touches the, the teeth, ta. The dhal has this very close maharaj. So these two letters come from about the same place from the mouth. So qari, what does he say? He says, I'm going to pronounce this Zal also. Okay, because they are very close, so easy in the sound. So this becomes two Zals can be written with a Shadda. So that's the word in the Quran. Yazakkaru is the word. Now, An means that. An means that. And An will change This last Dhamma to a Fata, make it Nazaf. So now the word becomes An Yadhakkara and when you pronounce Ya and Noon, you pronounce here Adhgham, so it becomes An Yadhakkara. Liman Arada, whosoever wants to, intends, desires. An Yadhakkara, that he should be remembering, he should be reminding, he should be pondering. Or doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, look at the signs of day and night, how they are changing one after. And those people who will ponder, if they want to, they will remember, do the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yad zakkara, he will do that. O arada, o means or. Arada is the same word. He intends, he wants to be. Uh, desiring the word shukura is from the shukr that means thankful shakir and shakur are the th so just for uh, remembering the or knowing the arabic properly root letters are sheen kaf and ra shakara this means to thank okay and commonly we don't know the words sha kirun Shakirun, when we stop, we say Shakir. Another word is Shakur. Full word is Shakurun. Now, one want to point out that 
दीज आर बोथ शाकिर एंड शकूर बोथ मीन थैंकफुल शाकिर इज थैंकफुल शकूर इज मोर थैंकफुल गाफिर गफूर गफूर इज वन हु फॉर गिवज अ लाट सो शकूर इज वन हु इज थैंकफुल अ लाट दीज टू वर्ड्स इन द कुरान आर यूज फॉर पीपल एज वेल एज फॉर अल्लाह सुबहान तला वन ए पर्सन इज शाकिर He is being thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When is a person is shakur, he is being more thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But in the many pla- in many places in the Quran, Allah uses this word for Himself. But when Allah uses for Himself, it he it doesn't mean that He is thankful to the man. He is not thanking the mankind. The meaning at that time is <clears throat> appreciating the thank of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. शाकिर वन शाकिर आलिमा मैनी प्लेस कुरान सेज वल्ला शाकिर आलिमा अल्लाह इज बींग अप्रिशिएटिव ऑफ ए पर्सन हु इज थैंकफुल सो फॉर द पर्सन बींग द मीनिंग इज थैंकफुल फॉर अल्लाह इट इज अल्लाह इज अप्रिशिएटिंग योर थैंक एक्नोलेजिंग योर थैंक सो दैट इज द वर्ड इन द कुरान now here the word is shukura not shakura shukuran and when you arada will change to shukuran shukuran means thankfulness okay it is a statement is a verb it's not it's a it's, it's a noun it's not a person it's a quality thankfulness so whoever he wants he can be thankful or who who ever it wants he can remember allah subhanahu wa taala by seeing the signs so here this is applying to the man also that man is desiring to be thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala so these are the detailed meanings and understanding of these verses may allah subhanahu wa taala give us tawfiq to understand the quran one thing i want to point out that ayat number 64 60 is ayat e sajida so when kufar heard they criticize but when we hear this sign this ayat we have to make sajda to after the class is done please make a sajda because this is ayat is sajda okay so inshallah we'll stop here may allah give us tawfiq to understand the quran sadaqallahu alazim